let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. Grief is universal. Everyone has lost someone they loved and felt the pain and emptiness that comes with such profound loss. And Nancy Williams lost the man she fell in love with as a teenager to a brief, harsh illness. She sought a way to ease the pain of bereavement. She needed strength to move forward with life. Nancy found solace in writing poetry, releasing her emotions through the written word. Now, in a return from grief, she takes you through her personal journey of loss and shares her emergence with grief into life once again. With honest, genuine emotion, Nancy fills the pages of a return from grief with the lessons she learned from living through the death of her beloved former husband. She offers solace and comfort to those enduring similar experiences. Nancy holds degrees in education and psychology, also been a lifelong creative writer who specializes in poetry and prose, originally from Pennsylvania. Nancy currently lives in Colorado with her daughter. Nancy Williams, author of A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese, is our guest on This Week in America. Nancy, welcome to the program. Such an important book, important message. Thank you for being with us. Well, you are so very welcome, and I am very honored to be here. I can tell you that when I, my purpose in writing the book was to help myself, but the secondary and most important part was to be able to help others. And in creating that plan, we have the current book. So it was very altruistic, wanting to help myself but help others. And here it is right now. Well, it's helping so many people. The reviews have been excellent. We'll talk about the reaction you're getting as we go through the conversation today. I I did a brief background on the book on you, but it's so important to understand who you are and what you went through. You are so relatable. You are a real person with real emotions dealing with what so many of us go through and struggle with on a daily basis. Tell us a little bit about who you are. I am someone who is has been blessed with the gift of words. And so whenever I'm faced with extreme circumstances, I find solace in writing. And others who read what I've created seem to be able to find solace as well. So I use the talent I have to help myself. I could start with the story of how it happened now. We could switch around to that. Um, It's quite an interesting and lovely story about how the book conceived i think my it might be a good time to read it yeah let's or, let's do that yes let's talk, talk about, about that how the, the why behind the book a return from grief lessons of the geese nancy williams our guest on the program i'll give you your website in just a second but how was the book conceived how did you get the idea for the book it was a cold march evening five months to the anniversary day of my beloved's death. And my dog and I, Benny, who is the main character in the book, went for a walk down to the park nearby where there's a lake. And we heard an incredible amount of noise. That, that My beloved Canada geese were there, and they were arguing and spattering and swimming around and bonking heads and just, so loud and so busy and I looked at my dog like what's going on and he looked at me like don't ask me (laughs) so we agreed to stay there in silence and we watched this whole process and the reward follows all of a sudden they took off in their perfect glorious V formation in which they travel What had been happening was my miracle. I sort of staggered over to the bench nearby where we were and sat down. And I looked at Benny and I said, you know what? They were making plans. They all have to agree with each other what their plan is before they start anything. And that, in fact, is what I was able to see. 
And so I said to myself, I need a plan. I'm going to write a book. And that night, I wrote the first poem for being out five months from the grief. And I'd like to share that poem. Please do. It's, it's called Making Plans. Tragedy strikes. Grief befalls the traveler. Halt. There is only now. Be willing to be present. Choose to make camp. Know the stars still light the heavens. Trust your glow will return. Feel a peak at the starlight and one at the rising sun. How does it continue to shine when I only know darkness? The side of the road can be home. Feel your pain here. You will be set free. One day you will chatter in your dreams or on your morning walk. You are making plans. So that was written that night. And the book actually is a collection of information on the whole background and understanding of grief and stages and things like that, medical advice that is possible that you might need and where you can go to find help. But the idea is that you do need a plan and you only live this in the now. Please remember that. When we experience grief, we go into fear and we believe, we don't think how will we survive the future. Well, we will one day at a time. And so we have to stay in the now, make our plan, and take one foot and put it in front of the other one. You know, it you, does work. You do have such a way with words, and I, I, I love that poem that you read. And you'll find so many more inspirational poems and in Nancy Williams' book, A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese, and as Nancy mentioned, uh, there are a lot of, of interesting bits of information there, like resources and things that you should do, in addition to uh, how she's guiding us all through this process of grief through through the poetry. The book is available, and more information on Nancy, at her, at her website, Nancy Williams, a return from grief dot com. That's Nancy Williams, a return from grief.com. We'll have that up on our website so you'll be able to, uh, to get that information. You can log on to the, the website, order the book there, get information, get in contact with, uh, with Nancy if, if you chose to, uh, to do that. I understand, Nancy, there was an interesting timeline to your book's publication. Can you share that, uh, share that with us? Yes, I would very much like to do that. My experience of this profound loss was 10 years ago, and it took a year, year and a half, to get the book created. What I did was go back and write poetry for that represents the feelings of grief in the first month, the second month, all the way through a whole year. So that is essentially what the book is, and... I had some complications with previous publishers, but I've never given up on the need to get this love and these words out. And so I am currently with a publisher who has been able to do that. And what I'm calling this is the right time. It's the right time for this final effort I've been working on for years to be out because our country right now is devastated in grief with the pandemic we've experienced and even this current collapse of a building in South Florida, I believe our whole nation is grieving with the families. So it's time. It's time for the book to to be out there. It's interesting. Yeah, finish that thought are bye-bye this is what counts right now it's needed 
there is so much, uh, uh, as you say, grief going on in the country. It's impossible to to pick up a newspaper without feeling that with the the COVID and the deaths and the long term implications of COVID. When we see mass shootings, when we see the collapse of the building in in southern Florida, there is something almost daily reminding us. So you're able to apply your approach to healing with uh, with the American population. Basically, and what we're all going through now in some different level of, of, of loss and grief. Absolutely. There are, there's a term that's used in this field called triggers. You can be having a good day, walk down the street, and hear a sound or smell something or pick up some scent of a flower or you hear sounds coming out of the neighborhood and they can trigger your grief. And right now, as you said, we are continuously triggered by grief because it's on the news all day, every day. In addition to our own personal suffering, all the input seems to be coming from countless triggers and we have to be able to take care of ourselves and respond to save our own selves i could approach that conversation next or you proceed with your question rick well i know you've got a poem that that's very relevant to what we're talking about you using your approach to healing now for what we're all going through i I don't want to put you on the spot but if you have that poem uh, uh, available would you read that for us please Sure. I think the most important message to give to a griever is you are not alone. Respect the fact that everyone grieves differently. However, there is no right or wrong way to do it. There are there is a need, however, that is important, and that is asking for help because we all need help and we I know that's hard for some people but you can finally reach the point where you say I'm not getting any better I need help and so I've written these poems to show you what's available I want to mention before I read I believe in the concept of village it takes a village to raise a child It takes a village to bury a loved one. And so we need human connection. There's soothing that's available. So I wrote this poem. Listen to me. My heart pleads to speak of this ghastly ache, to spill forth the language of my grief. Permit me to stumble and mumble the darkness of my soul, I simply must release this angst. Do not speak. I ask only for your ears and perhaps your arms to hold me. In silence, you authorize me to open to speak. Your gift allows me to give vent to my loss. I am free to expel my dread. My sorrow abates. Your gift blesses me. So we not only need to be heard and heard without judgment, but we need to be listened to. The words are so important, and you do such an excellent job of of, of, of sort of tapping into the emotions that all of us go through. Our guest on the program is Nancy Williams. She's the author of A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese. Her website is very simple, Nancy Williams, a return from grief.com. We'll have that website uh, up on our website so you can link on directly. And uh, we'll do that several more times before we, before we go through the program here. We're going to take a brief break. I want to, uh, there's so much more to talk about. Time is going by so quick with Nancy. Nancy Williams is our guest on the program. Their book is A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese. And we're back with Nancy after these messages. 
Welcome back. You're listening to This Week in America. Nancy Williams, our guest in the program. Her book is A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese. Uh, Nancy, you talked about something asking for help. And so uh, how important that is. And for many people, that's difficult to do. And I, you've got a poem that touches on that. Would you read that for us, please? Hold my hand. Wrap your hand around mine softly. When pain arises, may I squeeze tightly. Do not let go. Rather, linger tenderly. This respite soothes me gently. We have connected. You quiet my angst. Your compassion eases my fear. Your touch lightens my torment. For you are my friend. Your hand has gifted me. I am nourished. So we need to be able to reach out for a hand. We need to reach out for a listener. We need to make connections. There are people who grieve in solitary fashion. That is to be respected and honored, but it does make it more challenging because I think the support and love you need is found in your village. It's important to relate to the village. Nancy Williams is our guest on the program. The book is A Return from Grief. You'll find all the information, and you can order the book by going to our website, nancywilliamsareturnfromgrief.com. I want to talk a little bit about the anger and depression that you currently uh, sense on a widespread level in the country and, and how your book can, uh, can maybe relieve a little bit of that and, and make, us, make us feel better about ourselves and try to get through these difficult times. Well, it is my contention that the most difficult aspects of grief are anger and depression. When we first face our loss, we, we essentially go into shock and denial and bargaining. If I could just have one more day, what I would want to say, things like that. Yes. And then you realize, oh my goodness, this is so unfair. There. I didn't do anything to deserve this, and anger sets in. What lies below anger is fear. The fiercer the anger, the fiercer the fear. And so that needs to be acknowledged, and we have to make a decision. Are we going to stay in this anger or can we move a little further on? And usually we end up sinking into great sadness and depression. And that is the most challenging part is the depression that follows. I have a philosophy, and now might be a good time to share it. Please do, yes. You need to decide, as I said earlier, make a plan or wherever you are in your process, you have choices. You can choose to go to war with your grief or you can choose to surrender to grief. When you wave that red flag of being at war with this anguish, it makes it more difficult. If you're willing to fly a white flag of surrender, you can start softening and creating a safeness around yourself that will stop this insane war that you've been living with, whether you're living with it on a widespread in the country or your own personal loss. And I do have suggestions the most important thing you can do is love yourself and ultimately love this grief because it came from people you loved. At the same time, you have to protect yourself. And I have written a poem about that. You need to set boundaries so you can love and protect yourself. And here it is. 
boundaries. You have suffered great loss. Set boundaries. Protect yourself. Protect your grief. Well-meaning friends may be inappropriate. Take all of the time that you need. Do not let anyone tell you, quote, it's time to move on now. You're on your own schedule. Do not accept that. Be gentle with yourself in your new living environment. Do not let anyone tell you lonely people need to get a pet. You may decide it is the time to find a loving furry companion. That's your choice. You don't have to listen to people telling you what they think you should do. Allow your lip to quiver before you cry. Do not let anyone tell you, quote, keep a stiff upper lip. You're allowed to be mad at God. Do not let anyone tell you it was God's will, which indicates you should be in acceptance, which is the end of the healing road. You don't want to hear that. You are allowed to feel sorry for yourself. Do not let anyone tell you, quote, you have much to be thankful for. And at last, Allow no one to minimize your experience. Do not let anyone tell you, and this often happens, this too shall pass. You are in reality. You don't want to hear about a future time. Yes. Basically, love yourself. Protect yourself. People can be well-meaning, but they're known to say things that are not helpful at all. And it only causes more pain. There is... So don't be available to their suggestions if that's what is called for. So much wisdom in the book. And we've got a, about a minute or so left. I don't know where the time is going, but the book is so powerful. And in giving you lessons, be, and Nancy knows because she's been through there what you're feeling Nancy has felt. And uh, she's put this book together to help you through these difficult times. A return from grief, lessons of the geese. Any final words, uh, maybe a final poem to leave us uh, with from your book? Uh, you could sort of motivate us and get this over the maybe over the final hurdle that we're all trying to trying to get to any final words that maybe a final poem on on the program today yes i could quickly say first after watching the geese i researched their entire societies they love they're loyal they Never let a goose suffer alone. If one goes down, to accompany, accompany it and stay there until death. Their commitment to each other and to love and connection is the example that I use to write the book. I can end with the final words from the very last page. I told you I took a year and wrote 12 poems, one for how grief evolves during the 12 different months of your first year. So I'm ending with the task of forever lies dauntingly before me. Grief shall roar its head once more on days when I least expect it. That goes back to the triggers I mentioned. Exactly. So I stop because I will have to. For wrestling its claws is a losing battle. I must embrace my loss and love it. I will recover and rise to the task of recreating my wellness one minute or one day at a time. It works that way when one is getting well. You return from grief a step at a time, slipping, falling, crawling, but rising again to dance in the starlight. May you hear the music once again and be light on your feet. Carry a melody in your heart that lifts you to rise 
and take flight. There are great adventures to be lived. May you fly onward. So well said. And the book is full of, of wisdom, the emotions that, uh, that Nancy went through. Uh, the book is helping so many people and receiving rave reviews. The book is A Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese. Nancy Williams, our guest and the author. Her website, information on the book, uh, on Nancy, on the book, you can order there as well. Nancy Williams, a return from grief.com. Uh, you'll find that on a website, thisweekinamerica.us. Nancy, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. A lot of important ground we covered on the course of the program. It's so much more in your book, A Return from Grief. Thank you for being with us on the program and, and sharing your story. You are most welcome. And may the listeners be blessed and no things will improve and my last analogy i can give you is when grief strikes it's like crashing into the rocky mountains jagged rock horrible pain but as time goes on it moves it lessens eventually through your work and effort it feels like a sandy stone and it moves from there into being a precious pearl. The pearl represents the love of your beloved and the love you will carry with you forever. So put that pearl in your pocket below your heart. It will bless your days. It symbolizes the roar of the pain you're in now to the glowing love that you can end up with and carry because you are different and you will always be different. You are changed by this, but you can be changed in a healing way. So my compassion and blessings go out to you today, and I hope you're interested in taking the time to read this and soak in the words. There's beautiful artwork yes. and lots of nonfiction information as well. It explains the process and places to go for help and things like that as well. So there's a practicality about it, but it's basically based on asking for help, loving oneself, finding solace in nature. There's beautiful, there's beauty left in the sunrises and the sunsets. You can see them. And I have lovely poems about that. So thank you again. And I appreciate all of the people that are listening. And I hope, I hope so much I've touched someone's heart. I'm sure that you have, and you will continue to do that with the power of your poems, the power of your message. And again, it's Nancy Williams. The book is Return from Grief, Lessons of the Geese. Nancy's website is very simple. It's Nancy Williams, a return from grief.com. All that information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program. After these messages, you're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. More after this.